Hi, this is the second video of chapter 4, Input Markets. In this video we are going to talk about the marginal revenue product of labor. This is the concept we have already introduced in the last video. Then, mar the marginal revenue product of labor is defined as the additional revenue resulting from the sale of output created by the use of one additional unit of labor. Okay, so this is the additional revenue after selling, after selling the output that is created by the use of one additional unit of labor, one more worker. If I had, if I had one more worker, how much revenue, how much marginal revenue can I add to my firm? Okay, by this additional worker, by the hiring of this additional worker. Okay, how can I compute this? How can I measure the marginal revenue product of labor? Well, this is the additional output, the additional quantity obtained from the additional unit of this labor, multiplied by the additional revenue from an extra unit of output. Then the marginal revenue product of labor is the derivative of the total revenue with respect to the labor. Okay, so how can I compute this? I can compute this by just multiplying and dividing by the derivative of Q. So this is the same than saying that the derivative of the total revenue with respect to Q and the derivative of the product with respect to L. This, what we have here, the first part, the, to the derivative of the total revenue with respect to Q is also called as the marginal revenue. This is defined as the marginal revenue. And then the second part, the derivative of the quantity of the total output with respect to L is also called the marginal product of labor. This is the marginal product of labor. The marginal quantity that one more worker is going to produce. Okay, so this is the marginal revenue multiplied by the marginal product of labor. Marginal productivity. Okay, so then the marginal revenue product of labor will be equal to the marginal revenue multiplied by the marginal productivity. This important result is hold for any competitive factor market, whether or not the output market is competitive. Okay, but then if we have a competitive output market, then the firm will sell all the output at the market price. Okay, so the market price is given by the market. Then in a competitive output market, we also know that the marginal cost equals to the price and this also equals to the marginal revenue. Okay, so in the competitive output market, the price coincides with the marginal revenue, also with the average revenue and so on and so forth. But we only need this information that the marginal revenue equals to the price. So if we have a competitive output market, we know that the marginal revenue equals to the price and then if we substitute this in the in the equation that we have already uh, calculated, the marginal revenue product of labor will equal to, this is the price, I substitute the marginal revenue by the price, and then the other part is exactly the same. So in a competitive output market, the marginal revenue product of labor will equal to the price multiplied by the, mar uh, by the marginal product of labor, okay? And then here we have uh, both uh, functions, the marginal revenue product of labor in a competitive uh, output market and then in a monopolistic output market or any other imperfectly competitive market. Okay, so in the competitive output market, the marginal revenue product of labor will equal to the marginal productivity multiplied by the price or the price multiplied by the marginal productivity. Okay. And then in the monopolistic or imperfectly competitive output market, we have that the marginal revenue is not equal to the price. But why is it under, is it below the marginal revenue product of labor for a competitive market? Because just we know that the price, uh, when we have a monopolistic output market, the price is above the marginal revenue, it doesn't coincide with the marginal revenue. The marginal revenue will go 
about here and then it will equal to the marginal cost but then the price comes from another equation okay from the equation that is the inverse demand so as the marginal revenue doesn't coincide with the price in the monopoly the marginal revenue product of labor for the monopoly will be below the one that we have for the competitive output market because the marginal revenue doesn't coincide with the price but it it is above sorry below okay it is below the marginal revenue uh, compared with the price okay if you want to check this information you just have to go to the monopoly chapter and you will see that the marginal revenue doesn't coincide with the price in a monopoly then here we have more information imagine that we are in a perfectly competitive market as we are in perfect competition we have that the wage okay the, the one that is perfectly competitive here is the labor market if the labor market is competitive perfectly competitive we know that the wage is given by the labor market okay so it, it is not decided by the firm so it will be an horizontal line which will coincide with the offer okay this will give us the offer the number of workers who want to work and then here we have the demand okay the demand coincides as i have said with the marginal revenue product of labor okay so this is the demand and we find that here at the point where the offer the supply and the demand coincide we will know what is the optimum number of workers that I can hire and here will be the optimum wage because it is given by the market so the firm's demand for labor is given by the marginal revenue product of labor and then the profit maximizing firm will hire L star units of worker but then what happens if I decide to uh, hire one less worker if I decide to hire L1 instead of L star it means that the weight is below the demand or the marginal revenue product of labor and as the weight and the marginal revenue product of labor doesn't coincide we are not at an optimum okay so we are not maximizing the profits and then if we decide to hire one more worker it happens just the opposite that we are having our marginal revenue product of labor above the marginal cost which is the wage okay so the marginal cost is above the marginal uh, revenue and then again we are not in an optimum we are not maximizing the profits okay then here we can see what happens if there is a, sh a shift in the supply of labor so imagine that uh, the labor facing uh, the firm is S1 okay this is the wage that comes from the market the labor market and then at this uh, wage the firm is going to hire L1 units of labor because this is the point where the supply and the demand coincide or the marginal cost which is the wage coincide with the marginal revenue product of labor okay but then if the market the market wage rate decreases to W2 okay the supply is going to shift it's going to move it's going to be reduced because as the salary decreases there will be less workers who want to work in this market so the firm is going to maximize the profits by moving along the demand for the labor curve until the new wage okay and then until the new wage sorry is equal to the marginal revenue product of labor so here the new quantity that uh, the firm is going to hire will be greater because the firm at a lower wage wants to hire more workers if the salary decreases the firm will want to hire more workers although the supply will be lower because the salary has decreased okay and that's all for this video see you in the next one